guys, Heather of US Japan Fam here. I am so excited for today's video. I'm doing something totally new for myself and the channel, and this may be new for you. Something I've been really intrigued about for a long time, but I've just never done it before, and that is talking to a psychic advisor. So I'm really excited to be working with California Psychics for today's video. So basically how it starts is I got in contact with them and one of their customer reps hooked me up with one of their advisors and it's all anonymous. So the psychic advisor, whose name is Euralia, she didn't know my name or my phone number or anything. It's this automatic system that they set up the appointment, it calls you and then the advisor dials in so you're connected anonymously and the credits, whatever amount of money you put on, it's like a per minute or that's how it was for me anyway. And so it gives you so many minutes and at the end it chimes and lets you know when you have one minute left and then you can add money to extend it or whatever. But it's so it's all anonymous. They don't have your name or phone number or anything. So they can't be Googling who you are or whatever. So that was kind of a, a relief for me because I'm kind of a skeptic. I guess every psychic advisor has a different maybe skill set or, or ways that they connect. So the one I had, Eurelia, said that she doesn't use any tools and that she connects with names, whatever that means. So uh, she asked my name and my birthday and then asked if I had any particular questions or concerns that I was calling about. And so I started off by just, you know, telling her I've never done this before. I have no idea what to ask or what to expect. What I started with was saying that we, my family is moving out of the city and kind of nervous about how it's going to go and if this is the right move for us and just let her kind of take it from there. And her first question was, do you have two or three kids? And that was interesting because I hadn't mentioned how many kids and she just went for two or three. And I guess if you're going to be skeptical, so everything that we talked about, like you can really like narrow it down to, um, I guess, statistics. So her saying, do you have two or three kids? Statistically, what don't we have? Uh, the American family has 2.3 kids, right? So I guess saying two or three kids, that's, you know, ah, uh, it's a good guess. But I mean, she was right. And so I said, we have three. And she said, oh, that's funny because I'm really feeling two. I'm really feeling two for you. Are they divided somehow into two groups, like boy and girls? Again, statistically, okay, boy and girl, maybe, yeah. But um, for me personally, we are divided in two ways into two groups. So we have a boy and girls, and we also have one child and the twins together. So in both of those situations, you could kind of see it as two groups so i kind of laughed and that really kind of was the first connection i really felt with her that she maybe was like actually reading me um again it could have all just been like you know cleverly going down this list of questions and making guesses and whatever i connect with i agree and she can feel it and then she keeps going in that direction Maybe, but I just kind of started getting these random chills and goosebumps and I just kind of felt in my gut that she was the real deal, which was cool. I wanted it to be real and I really felt that it was. So we kept going and, um, and then she asked if the boy was younger because for some reason she saw the girls above him on the family tree. And she said, you know, obviously he's not younger because I told her he's older, but um, so that was the first thing that was off. But then she kept going and saying, you know, it could be for a different reason. For example, he's more needy of you at the moment or, or something. And I, that really connected with me as well because it's true. The girls are kind of doing their own thing. And yes, they have tantrums and whatnot, but 
my son is doing remote learning for second grade and he needs a lot of attention to help him through all of that throughout the day to encourage him to get his work done and help him with typing and all this stuff. So as far as him needing me more than the girls right now, totally accurate. And then she asked if one of the girls was a spitfire and I literally burst out laughing because <laughs> A hundred percent accurate. So Emmy and Kenzo are very similar in that they're really chill for the most part. And Mia is a spitfire if there is any word to describe her. Just so strong-willed. She really felt me there with one of them being a spitfire. But again, if you want to be skeptical, you have three kids, good chances that one of them is considered a spitfire, right? I don't know. But again, I got the chills and I really felt like I just laughed and I said, I'm totally creeped out by right now. <laughs> in a joking way but totally felt like she got me and she got my family so it was cool she kind of gave some advice and she said she strongly encourages me to celebrate their differences because she sees them as being very competitive and if we're not celebrating their differences that could go really badly and obviously with any twins especially same-sex twins um, this is a huge deal so great advice whether that was from her psychic abilities or just her being a great emotional uh, advisor life coach you name it um, that was great advice and she asked all the kids first and middle name and birthday and I guess that's how you know she said she connected with names and whatnot so she started talking about how she's really drawn toward Emmy and that Emmy is an empath like me. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> Shut the front door. What is an empath and how are me and Emmy empaths? <laughs> so she kind of explained a, an empath is someone who really feels emotions of others so deeply that you feel the emotion yourself and sometimes it's hard to realize if it's actually your emotion or if you got it from another person or something that just happened what i have no idea what this means and i really want to look more into it um but apparently emmy and i are both this and so um psychic Eurelia was saying that she was kind of giving us advice as far as um, going through a mental checklist when you feel really strong emotion to determine when it started and what it's from. For example, she's saying I could go to the grocery store and get a really snarky cashier and then all of a sudden I'm in the worst mood and I um, don't even know why and if I go through the checklist I can figure out that's why. I took her emotion basically. And I'm like, oh my god, this is so this is so weird. And so when I'm thinking about Emmy being an empath and really picking up on the emotions of others as well as myself, she was saying when she gets to be older in the teen years and stuff, this could be a huge problem if we haven't figured out how to deal with it. So like our energies are kind of feeding off each other. At one point when we were talking about Emmy and my relationship and us being empaths and stuff, I really started getting really emotional and teary eyed and again with the chills and stuff and it just, it, it, I don't know why I felt so emotional. I guess like the fear of, of my children struggling emotionally or trying to figure out their way in the world. It always, it always weighs heavy on my shoulders and to hear that she in particular might need some extra guidance really um, really hit me. As far as me being an empath, she said that uh, helping others is kind of a currency for empaths. So by helping others feel good or, or improving themselves, it really helps us to feel good. And I find that interesting that I'm a mommy blogger and that I run several mom groups on Facebook and I really do love helping people and and it's I just thought that's like a normal trait for people but maybe it's not psychic Eurelia actually asked if um if I was a realtor or had thought about being a realtor I guess that's also kind of like helping people and connecting that's something that I have thought about and maybe something after we move that I will look into and the conversation just went very naturally in all these different directions and she was so easy to talk to 
and it was just really interesting. I really, really loved talking to her. When the one minute bell rang saying we had one minute left, we both like, ah, and she kind of like did this quick summary of like what to think about moving forward. And she talked about clear hearing. And I guess it's this inner voice of empaths. And she said to look into it. Because of the reading with Psychic Aurelia, I really feel a deeper connection to myself and in particular, one of my kids. But anyway, that is how my first reading with a psychic advisor went. It was awesome and I highly, highly recommend you guys try it. California Psychics, you can find them online. I'll link it in the video description really easy they hook you up with a psychic advisor based on you your what you're looking to get out of it i guess and as well as your budget and then you talk to them and they say you know if you don't feel a connection right away hang up and call the customer service back and they'll find you a new one there are some that you'll connect with very deeply very quickly and others that you just won't be feeling it and so don't waste your time and money on that uh, i guess it's a very personal thing to find the right one that you connect with. I think that this is a really cool gift because how many people out there would love this and could really gain some great insight into themselves, their world. You can find someone who can see your past and help you through past trauma or connect with a dead loved one or or guide you through some changes or, or whatever, like whatever you need, you can find the right person to help you through it. And so many people out there would love this, but never really thought of splurging on themselves for it. So it's a really cool gift, whether it's a birthday or Mother's Day or an anniversary or gifting it to someone else or gifting it to yourself. Really cool idea. I highly recommend it. As I mentioned, it's discreet. They're not giving out your name or your phone number or any information about you to the psychic advisor. So it's all confidential, it's flexible, it's customized toward you, and it's 24 seven. You can call them and get a reading scheduled for any hour of the day, whatever works for you, which is awesome. And California Psychics has an extremely high standard. They only accept 2% of people who apply to work for them. And on top of that, they go through rigorous training and screenings and all this stuff. So you can feel confident that the psychic advisor you get really knows their stuff in and out. And they have some strong abilities to offer you. Anyway, that is my spiel. That is all about California psychics. And my first ever psychic reading was so fun. And I challenge you guys to give it a try. Open your mind, whether you're a skeptic or you've done this before and let me know how it goes for you or if you've done it in the past how it went for you then um, you can't comment here but you can find me over on US Japan fam on Facebook thanks for watching guys take care and stay tuned for more